The gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and aligning on him. Alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Here ends the Gospel reading. Thanks be to God. Can you repeat after me? This is my son. The beloved. With whom I am well pleased. I have a confession. This is one of my favorite texts. The voice from on high that says, You are my beloved. You are my child. Whom I am well pleased. Is this not the voice that we all also need to hear? In the baptism of Christ, we find the gracious affirmation of God upon Jesus. Not only was Jesus filled with the Spirit of God and was moved by the Spirit into the wilderness and as began his ministry, as we begin our new year and as we recall and affirm our own identity in Christ as a beloved child, is this not a wonderful way to begin our new year by hearing the voice of God that affirms who you are in relationship to God? Yes? Amen to that? Amen. That I am a child of God, that I am a beloved of God, and that we are loved by God and affirmed by God, and that God is pleased with us, and that God is moving us through the Spirit of God to do the very work of God, which God has called each and every one of us. And I think it's a wonderful way to not only affirm our officers here, right, but also to, um, to celebrate together what this call might mean. And what is this baptism? You know, baptism is, you know, we celebrate our birthdays, right? You all know your birthdays, right? Do you remember your baptismal day? <laughs> oh, wow, that's great. Some remember their baptismal day. We don't celebrate our baptismal day as we celebrate our birthdays, right? But I think in the faith journey, baptism is very significant. Now, we have infant baptism, right? So most of us don't remember exactly um, your own baptism. How many of you remember your baptism? Okay, there are a few of us here who actually remember baptism. I can't remember my baptism because I was only a little infant baby. But baptism has such a significance in our life of our faith because it reminds us every, each time we celebrate in front of this font to baptize a child, we recall and reaffirm God's gracious affirmation that you belong to me in life and death. And, and when we have a memorial service, we say our baptism is complete. In other words, no matter how our lives come to an end, that it is perfected in faith because God has called us. There are no regrets. We have life that God has given us and we live that life in fullness. And it's because, why? Because our lives are held by the love and grace of God. There's nothing more we could add or take out. That it is full and it is affirmed by the graciousness of God. Now, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. In our lives, we always feel like we're never good enough and we need to add to our identity, right? We gotta have a bigger wallet or bigger houses or no matter, and it seems like it's never enough and it adds, it's supposed to add to our identity, our greatness or who we are as a human being. But the baptism reminds us that it doesn't matter. We are all God's children and that because we are beloved, the worth of our lives are held simply by the fact and that truth and that is the love of God. You know, this past Friday I had this, uh, you see this uh, peace sign here? 
Well, there's a, the word says peace. I told Ruth I'm going to use this as my sermon sample. What do you see here? You see the world, you see a globe, and you see peace. What we did was, this was a part of a little game we played last Friday um, at Messy Church, and kids had, and adults too, including, we had this, um, well, let me see. Oh, if one that fell. Okay, you, you shouldn't be left alone here, beautiful dove. Okay. And uh, each child had this little dove, and they were instructed to, well, I made them a little dizzy by disorientating them like this. And then you go, blindfolded, and you go. Oh, is that Greenland? Okay. So, oh. <laughs> And as we were playing this game, the kids, uh, instead of uh, sticking it here on the board here with the world, that God's peace may be in these places, and the dove being not only peace sign, but the sign of the spirit, one of the kids, uh, they went and, and instead of here, they did it on people's faces like this. <laughs> and I said, wow, there's an epiphany right there. The Spirit of God, right on us. Not only in this world, I think we all need this little sticker here on our forehead, just like that game. That's exactly what happened with Christ. The Spirit of God descended upon him. And when the Spirit of God came upon him, those who witnessed his baptism heard a voice that said, you are my child my beloved, whom I love. And because of that affirmation, because of that identity rooted in God's love and God's grace, he went and did his ministry. So as we begin our new year, as we or install new officers, as we celebrate our communion today, we're reminded that each of us are filled with the Spirit of God. And that because God has loved us and God has held us in God's grace, that we can move forward into even uncertain futures, even unto death as Christ has died on the cross. That no matter what happens in our lives, that you and I are held by the grace and love of God. And no matter how our lives come to an end, because one day, we will die. And as I said to you before, a preacher used to say, we're going to bury you, come back to church, and have potato salad. <laughs> so, no matter how our lives come to an end, the love of God is always there for us. This is at the heart of our gospel, and it is because of this love of God. And the gospel, we find the good news of Jesus Christ that we are able to do the kind of mission that we are able to do. We are moved and compelled by this call. So, as you leave this place, you may actually want to take one of these and place it on your forehead, reminding us, not only of our baptism, but remembering our call and remembering our identity rooted in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the baptism of Jesus Christ through whom we find ourselves, who we are, to whom we belong, where we have come from, where we are today, and where we need to go. We give you thanks, O oh God, that even in spite of all the uncertainties that may lie ahead, and no matter what may happen in our lives, that we are held by your love and that we are held by your grace. Indeed, our hearts are filled with gratitude because of this good news, because of your spirit, because of your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.